Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe sampling techniques used in biology. Now in the video on biodiversity, we looked at the idea of species richness and species evenness. In order to determine these, we need to be able to sample the organisms within a habitat. We're going to start by looking at how to sample animals. Imagine that we wanted to sample the insects present in a field of plants, such as this meadow. One technique is to use a sweeping net, which I'm showing you here. The sweeping net is swept over the plants multiple times, and this traps any insects present. We can catch small insects directly by using a pooter. A pooter consists of a container with two tubes. The trapping tube is placed near the insect that we want to catch. We place the mouthpiece tube in our mouth and gently inhale. The insect is now sucked into the trapping tube and into the container. The mouthpiece tube has a piece of cloth to stop any insects from being sucked into the mouth. If we want to trap ground level animals, such as insects or snails, then we can use a pitfall trap, like the one I'm showing here. A pitfall trap is a container sunk into the ground. Over the trap, we place a cover which prevents rainwater from entering. Ground level animals fall into the trap, which is deep enough to stop them from crawling out. If we want to sample the tiny animals present in soil, then we can use a Tulgren funnel, which I'm showing you here. The soil sample is placed in a funnel above a container, and a light bulb gently heats the surface of the soil. The animals in the soil move downwards away from the heat. Once the animals reach the bottom of the funnel, they fall into the container. Kick sampling is used to sample the bottom dwelling animals living in a riverbed. A net is placed downstream, and the scientist gently kicks the riverbed to dislodge any rocks or pebbles. Any organisms which are disturbed move downstream and are caught in the net. Now if we're sampling slow moving or static animals, for example on a seashore, then we can use a frame quadrat like this. A frame quadrat is simply placed on the ground, and any animals within the quadrat are sampled. We can also use a frame quadrat to sample the plants in a habitat. Imagine that we're using a quadrat which is one meter squared. If we count the actual number of a plant species, for example dandelions, then the number we count is called the density per meter squared. This is a highly accurate sampling method. Some plants are difficult to count, for example moss, or we may have a plant with a very large number, such as grass. In these cases, we look at how many small squares within the quadrat contain the plant. We then report this number as the percentage frequency. The quadrat I'm showing you here contains 100 small squares. If moss was found in 20 of the squares, then the frequency of moss is 20%. Notice that we're not trying to determine how much of each square is covered by moss. We're simply saying this percentage of small squares contain moss. Now if a plant occupies a large proportion of the quadrat, then we can use percentage cover. In this case, we simply estimate by eye what percentage of the total quadrat area is occupied by the plant. Percentage cover is a very rapid way of sampling, but it's the least accurate method. In all cases, we can increase reliability by placing the quadrat in multiple positions and calculating a mean. Now, instead of using a frame quadrat, we can use a point quadrat. A point quadrat is a wooden bar with holes in it. We position the bar over the ground and place metal pins into each hole. We count any plant which is touched by the pin. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe sampling techniques used in biology. 